Welcome back to another video and in today's episode we shall be fixing another issue that just got reported and here is the fix. This issue happens when you don't have necessarily enough space in your inventory. Uh, you can start duplicating things. Um, so let me show you what I mean by that. Let's first open up our chest. We got to add some items into this. So uh, we have the player slots. Okay. And let's just simply, let's simply make the array and let's add an entry of the S slot structure. Let's split this, select our database. And let's say we want to add uh, inside of a single slot. We want to add a banana. And let's say I want to have like 99 bananas in one slot. So let's press play now and you will see I have a slot with 99 bananas. Uh, my maximum stack amount in this case is five. And so if I'm trying to pick up more items than I can, this is going to give us an issue. So if I hold control and bring it over, it's going to allow me to select the amount. So let's say I'm selecting like 27. I press yes, you can see I have 555, but this is still 99. It doesn't remove the amount. So basically, if I'm trying to remove more items than I have space for them, then it is going to basically duplicate those items, which is not a good thing. And the same thing is going to happen in the shops and basically everywhere else in the crafting bench whatsoever, everywhere where you are adding items to. So uh, let's create a fix for this. And in order for us to create a fix for this, we need to add a new function, basically. So I'm going to add a new function and I'm going to call this return free space there we go so uh, on this one what I'm going to do is basically go through the whole inventory so I'm going to get my player slots first so let's get the player slots and on this one I want to loop uh, through the whole inventory through the whole thing without any breaks we want to check all the slots we might have uh, then we want to break this break the item as well and check whether the row name is equal to empty because well the empty slots have the empty item in them so let's do an if on this there we go connect the condition and now if this is true then we want to provide a local variable so let's create ourselves a new local variable and i'm going to call this empty uh, actually local empty slots there we go, we have the local empty slots and then this one should be an integer. Now on true, we want to add plus one to this. So on true, we wanna set the value, we wanna get the current value, uh, basically actually without the set node, you can just get the current value and do a plus plus increment integer and it's basically going to add plus one so adds plus one to the specific value uh, then sets it so that's basically all we got to do and then once this thing is completed we want to do exactly the same thing in our backpack as well so let's bring in our equip backpack and first let's check if it is valid so that we would know whether we actually have the backpack or not then what i'm simply going to do is actually copy this whole part bring it over here and on is valid, I'm going to connect it to the execution. And for the array from the equip backpack, I'm going to get the backpacks player slots. Connect the array. There we go. And now it's going to do exactly the same thing. It's going to go through all of the slots, find the empty ones and basically add the value for this local empty slots. Now we also want to then return some of the information. So let's select the base node and let's give this an output. And then inside of this output, uh, let's call this total free space. And let's make this into an integer like so. Now, but the thing is that this is not enough because as of right now, it only returns the amount of slots, amount of free empty slots. And we also need to check what is the maximum item amount that can be placed in one slot. And also maybe we already have slots with these items. so. Maybe there's some space in those ones as well. So then technically we'd, we could have even more free space than just the free slots. So the first thing that we want to do is actually provide an input for this because we want to pass along the item that we are checking for. So I'm going to call the input item and this is going to be the S slots structure type like so. Now we have done this. What I'm actually going to do with it is simply promote this to a local variable so that it is easier for us to access this. So I'm going to rename this to be the local item. Let's connect the executions so that this thing actually does get set. And then 
over here at the bottom from is not valid and from the completion. So both of these are going to need to come together. We want to bring in our local item. We want to split it. We want to split the item. And then from the data table, we want to get data table row. And also let's connect our row name. And then the is not valid and the completion of the loop can go inside of this get data table row. Now, the next thing that we want to do is on this out row, we want to break our S inventory structure like so. And then this is going to return us the, let's see where it is. We have the max amount. So basically we want to get the max amount and multiply this with a different integer. And the other integer that we want to multiply this with is our local empty slots like so. Now this is going to return us the amount that we could stack in the free slots that we might have. But well, this again is not enough. Like I said, we might have some free spaces in some already existing slots. So for that, let's upgrade one of the functions that we already have. So we have a function called return stacks. And this function basically returns the amount of items that we have on our player. It also returns its locations. Now, in order to upgrade this, then what we want to do is so we don't have a local item in this function, I believe. Nope. So that's exactly what I'm going to do to save space. I'm going to promote the item uh, input to a local item variable. Let's again set it the same way. It's easier to work with the local ones because it removes a lot of pins. So now we can do just that. Remove these extra pins by connecting our local items like so. So we have another one over here. There we go. And now we need to upgrade our functions a little bit. So I'm going to select the top part, bring it down just a little bit to make life easier. When we set this value, we could break it. Then again, break the item, split the pins. And then from the data table, again, we can get data, data table row. So that we can get the information about the max stack amount. So again, from the outro, we can then break our inventory structure. And then this gives us the maximum amount that is allowed in the stack. Then we can connect our row found to over here. And let's see. So um, we have the amount that's inside right there right now. So this is this one and we have the maximum amount. So what we want to do is get the maximum amount and do a minus integer minus integer. So maximum amount minus the current amount that we have from the loop like so. And now this is going to return us the amount that is still available in that slot. So for that, again, let's create a new local variable so we can hold this value somewhere and let's call this local free space. There we go. And then at the end of this all, we can basically set this local free space. And for this variable, what we want to do is we want to get the current free space that we already have found and do a plus integer plus integer and connect those like so and connect to the set node. There we go. So now this is all only going to get set whenever we are finding the correct item and checking whether it has any free space in it. So what you got to make sure of is that you have set the maximum amount for all of your items. So let's say we have, let's find this entry. We have the maximum amount right here. All of the items have to have at least one. If you have any of these at zero, uh, actually probably the inventory isn't even going to work. I don't, honestly, I don't even remember anymore because it's been quite a while since I made that functionality, but I think it shouldn't even work. The values should be at one uh, even before uh, b before you are following this exact video. So make sure that your max amount for all the items is at least at one. Now let's see. So we are setting this for the backpack and we want to do exactly the same thing for the player slots as well. So I'm going to copy these last few nodes, copy these here to the bottom, connect the execution. And now, so we want to plug in the minus. So the bottom one is the current amount that we have and the top one is the max amount from the inventory structure. So it should look something like this. Now what we want to do with the output is actually output the free space. So let's add ourselves a new output and let's call this free space. There we go. And now then this thing needs to be an integer like so. And then we can plug in our local 
free space to be over here. There we go. So we are outputting also the free space that there might be as well. So now we can go back to the function that we just created in this video, which is called the return free space. And once we are done with looking for the empty slots and once we have gotten the uh, inventory structure information then we want to return the stacks like so and we want to return the stacks uh, let me move this down a bit we want to return the stacks for our local item so i'm going to bring in the local item connect it like so and it's going to return all the possible free slots Actually, not the free slots, but the free spaces in already existing slots, which are not empty. So that's exactly what we want to do. We made this value right here to be the value from the empty slots. And this value right here is going to be received from the already taken slots. So we want to add these two together. So the free space output plus integer plus integer plus this free slots times the maximum amount and then we can plug that into our output and this is going to return us the total free space that we can have so now this function is going to allow us to check whether our character actually has this in enough of this free space before we actually do the purchase of the or the item movement now we gotta actually put this function to use so what we want to do is go to our ui folder on the confirm by widget if we would go to the graph on the event graph on click yes or skip question over here we have the add item we first we check whether the item is available and then we check then we try to add the item to our inventories so what we want to do is before this before we add the item to the inventory and uh, this one should be still back over here so what i want to do over here is simply check so if we get our player reference and over here we want to return free space. So we are returning the free space. Let's connect our item like so, get, connect the item. And now this is going to return us the free space. And what we want to check for is that this free space is bigger or equal to the amount in the item. So we want to break the slot structure and connect the amount to the bottom one. And then over here, we want to do another if branch check, connect the condition and on true, then we can add the item on false. Well, we want to go where the false is, where all the false basically go to the bottom part right here. And we want to do exactly the same thing with all of these. Well, not all of these, but for the shop as well, because this issue is going to occur for the shop as well. So let me do that. And for the simplicity, I'm just going to simply copy these nodes right here, bring them in. True, true, and the false goes to over here. There we go. So basically that is going to fix our issue. So now let's give this a go. Let's walk up to our chest and let's try to move across 23 items. And as you, as you can see, it's not allowing us to technically. So we have 15 free slots. So we could have whoops, up until 15. So if we move 14, you can see we have five, five and four. That is exactly what we should have. So that's going to be it for today's video. Um, if you find any more issues with the system, any more bugs, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Join my discord, message me. And uh, yeah, we'll crush them as soon as possible. So thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.